Okay, so a couple of the guys were questioning um, how my setup is again. So uh, I'm, I'm actually inside. I'm getting ready to set up outside, but I've got everything in here where it's nice and bright and you can see everything. So the computer that's actually controlling the mount and the auto guiding and the autofocuser is this Codelix right here. And this is inside of a tub uh, that I just threw together. It's not the greatest looking thing by, on, by any stretch, but it's just to secure the cables down and to secure the moonlight controller. Um, I've got a, a hot blanket, a little heating pad right underneath uh, this uh, old plastic um, cutting board which is just keeping the temperature up uh, uh, probably somewhere around 50, 55 degrees. I don't know. I really haven't put a, a uh, thermometer in here, but it's enough to keep this just warm. If it gets too cold, it, it tends to act up a little bit and tends to freeze, um, <laughs> almost literally. But uh, I, I caught this from one of the other guys on YouTube, and he does the same thing, except he's using a laptop. Well... Uh, just a little bit of heating pad, and I typically keep it either on low or medium, and it keeps that warm enough to where it operates okay. Uh, there's also a, a power strip in here, uh, which has got the uh, camera uh, power supply going out, and then the mount power supply going out. And then it also has the power supply for the moonlight focuser, and also this right here for the heating little heating pad. So when I'm connected up to it, everything branches off of this computer. So this is the focuser uh, USB that goes out to the focuser on the scope. That's my guide camera, or excuse me, that's the guide camera. That's my imaging camera. And then this blue line is the ethernet connection. And that goes directly to the mount, to the Gemini 2. At which point, in order to operate and control this uh, I've set this up on auto Wi-Fi connect uh, to my home router so as soon as I press the power button it will automatically same thing you do on your laptops or your phones if you are changing locations depending where you're at it will automatically uh, connect to the Wi-Fi here at the house at that point I then just go over to the regular laptop and then I use RDP or remote desktop in order to dial in back to the code licks. So there's there's actually no wiring between that computer and this computer. It's all done over Wi-Fi uh, through remote desktop. And you can use type VNC viewer and there's a few others as well. Um, so hopefully that helps out a little bit. And as part of this video too, uh, Chris asked me a while ago, and I, I just haven't had a chance to do it, and I'm going to do it tonight as I'm messing around with, uh, uh, with tracking, uh, trying to get that dialed in a lot better. Um, I'll do the video on how to actually connect up uh, via Ethernet, because uh, there's some settings in there, and, and the Gemini 2 page seems like it's a little, it is a little confusing at first. So I'm going to give you all of the uh, uh the information directly off of mine so you can see exactly how to set yours up. Okay, we'll be back. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back. Um, talk about a comedy of errors. So I, I started doing this uh, video on how to hook up your Ethernet for your Gemini 2 to your computer. <laughs> and I was, I was a few minutes into it and... Uh, I was showing you how to uh, to check your your settings, your Ethernet settings on your Wi-Fi, and I had accidentally uh, disconnected <laughs> the uh, mini computer from my Wi-Fi, so uh, I had to go get it from outside, bring it upstairs, plug in the monitor with a uh, with a USB keyboard, and uh, <laughs> set it back to the to the correct Wi-Fi, I accidentally turned it on to airplane mode. So, um, just goes to show you, you know, you, <laughs> you try your best to plan these videos and they don't always go off. So, anyway, so we're trying it again. It's actually much later <laughs> than what it was when I first started all this. Um, 
kind of an interesting past couple of nights. So for some reason on the G11, uh, I'm, I'm getting a weird RA anomaly in PhD, and it comes around about every four minutes, which is about the time it takes for it to do a full revolution uh, on the gear in RA. And apparently, there's there's something going on there because my guiding just like almost literally between last weekend and this weekend just went to complete trash. And uh, I posted a log on the PhD group uh, Google page and they looked at my log and they said, nah, this is something mechanical. So I uh, ran it again tonight and got another log and asked them to look at it one more time just to confirm that it looks like it's something mechanical. And then I'll send it off to Les Mondi. And uh, see what they say. Because uh, one of the other things that happened too was there was a little bit of stiction had started to occur when I was uh, balancing the mount in, in RA. And um, it just over the past, uh, I guess, couple of months now, uh, when I go to balance, each time I, was, I was, would go to balance, it just gets a little bit more sticky. And I, I sent an email to, to Les Mondi about it, and they said, yeah, no problem. We, uh, you know, we got a fix for that. We'll, we'll mail you this. Uh, uh, some sort of an insert, I think, that goes into the RA axis. So they're supposed to be sending me that. So I don't know if this is connected or not. Um, just been literally, I guess, for, let's see, Tuesday or Wednesday night, I think it was. No, no, excuse me. Last Sunday night, it started going a little south. And then uh, last night and tonight, it went completely south. So I don't know. We'll figure that out. When, when I get to it, I'll let you all know. Uh, what's going on with it once I figure it out. So, but this this portion of the video is about uh, connecting your Ethernet to your Gemini 2. Um, Chris, I think you asked about, did I actually do a video on this? So I'm gonna try to pick through it and uh, show you all what I did. So bear in mind now, uh, right now, even though you know, you're, you're, you're seeing a computer screen, this is actually the uh, mini computer that I'm connected to. So whatever computer you're going to be driving your mount and your guider and your camera off of is going to be the mount that you want to connect your Ethernet to. Now there's a lot of advantages to running the Ethernet. Uh, one of them, especially with the mount uh, or for the mount, is you'll get uh, quicker guiding pulses back and forth between the mount and PHD2 versus your ST4 cable. It's also not as quirky as ST4 and it's a, it's more durable. So if you have an ethernet port uh, on your on your mini computer or on your laptop, it's suggested that you actually go this route in order to, to use it. If you don't, you can also use a USB to ethernet connector, which uh, they do cover. So. What I would recommend is to go to the Gemini-2.com website. Uh, if you don't know this already, this is the wealth of information that covers the Gemini, the new Gemini 2. And it, it, when you first come here, literally just go to Gemini 2 and start on start here. And just go down through, there's tons of information that's in here that's all gonna be very, very helpful for you. And, um, setting up and running your Gemini 2. Um, there's specifically, once you get down to, you get connecting to the Ethernet port. And you can just click on these, same thing, I recommend you go down through all of them and read them. Um, but they are a little funky sometimes. And uh, the way that one of them is written is, is uh, it kind of took me a little while to go through. And um, one of my buddies, I, again, I think it's Chris, he had the same uh, issue, so we emailed each other and actually got on the phone and we were able to figure it out and we just went with all the settings that I had and it worked perfectly. So start there and uh, again, go through all those tutorials first and then when you get ready to go to the connect to the Ethernet port, go into it. Now there are, if, again, if you don't have the Ethernet port, there is another way to do it come down to Ethernet connection methods drawings and go into that, that'll show you um, where you can use a uh, 
USB converter cable over, um, which is, let's see, yeah, so you can go to, like, say, a powered hub with USB cable and then a USB cable to an Ethernet adapter and then run your adapter over to the Gemini 2. Um, so that is a way to do it. Now, I have not done that, um, so I can't say for sure how well that works um, because I have an Ethernet port. So I uh, don't know. If somebody does it and they try it, let me know. Um, but from what I understand, though, the settings will still be the same uh, regardless when you go to connect uh, as far as like configuring uh, your laptop or your mini computer for it. So configuring with Windows 10, uh, they also have 7 and XP. Uh, they're saying 8 and 10 should still be the should be fairly close. It depends on what operating system you have. Uh, for me, I have 10. So hence this is the reason why I'm starting, uh, why I've been using 10, and most all new computers nowadays come with 10. I think you can get 7 if you're lucky, uh, but you're paying for it. So the first thing to do, this is how I screwed up earlier. So <laughs> when you go to your Wi-Fi icon and you right-click it, you're going to go to Open Network Sharing Center, and this is where it's wanting you to go to. And when you open that up, here we go. I'm going to try to minimize this so you can see it as we're reading through it so you see exactly what we're doing. And we'll just do it real time. So uh, open the Network Sharing Center. We'll come up like this. And whoops, sorry, a little too quick on the old uh, shovel there. Uh, you're going to go to Change Adapter Settings on the left side, which is right here. Uh, when you click on that, it'll look just like this does, as you see here. Now, there is a difference here. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things you're seeing different is I've already set up my Ethernet connection. If you have not set up your Ethernet connection yet, then you will not have this portion of it right here, and this is where you're going to continue to go through. So as we go down, you're going to right, uh, right mouse click on the one that says Local Area Connection, and then you're going to click on Properties. And so what that looks like that is you're going to be here. We're just going to right click, go to Properties. This will now come up exactly what you see down here, and you're looking for Internet Protocol Version 4. And you're going to click on that right there. At which point you're going to click on to Properties. And then this is going to come up. And of course, now that I'm in, I can't show you where I keep going. So it's going to ask you to put in uh, an IP address and a DNS server address. The way that the, uh, the direction state is, is a little confusing in this area, um, because it, at one point it, it, it kind of makes it look like you should use the IP address that's in your hand controller, because there is one dedicated to the hand controller. But the user group comes back and says, no, don't use it. Um, use these instead. And so I set mine up th the way they had them listed out here. And I'm going to suggest you do the exact same thing. So in your IP address, you're going to put in 192.168.0.100. Your subnet, 255.255.255.255. There's nothing in the default gateway. You're going to come down to use the following DNS server address. You're going to use 8888, and your alternate DNS server will be 8844. Okay? So, with that, and I'm going to use this so I can pull down a little bit here more. So, this is exactly what it's going to say. So, go with the settings that you see in mine, those will work. So again, click on your user following IP address, put in those numbers I gave you, your 8888-8844, and we're going to scroll down. So exactly as I've just showed you, this is what you're going to do. Don't worry about the default gateway, that shouldn't matter. Uh, I think I've tried it with it on there and without it on there, and it's defaulted without it, so I wouldn't worry about it. And this is where it kind of just gets a little confusing. Um, but again, just go with what I put in there, and you should be okay. It, it works for Chris, too, so it should be all right. 
Um, all right, when you're done, you want to go to the advanced settings, right? So let me go back here again. Uh, let's see, let me close that one, try to make this a little bit easier. Sorry, if it allowed me to, to roll through, this would probably go a lot easier. Okay, so at this point, you go to, you filled in your numbers, you go to advanced, and at this point, you're going to go to the WINS tab. Now, your IP address should be loaded in there along with your subnet. If you go to the WINS, this is now what you're going to want to look for. You want to make sure that your enable LM, LM host lookup is checked. And then there's two ways that this could go, depending on whether or not NetBIOS is activated um, on your computer. Now, mine. I believe was already activated. Um, I can't remember if Chris's was or not. But there's two ways you can do this. You, it's it's a right or wrong thing. So if you just leave it on default, and then go and check the gateway, if it launches into um, the the web interface with the Lismati G with the Gemini two, you're good to go. If it does not, then you're just going to come back to the advanced settings and click Enable NetBIOS over TCP IP. Try it again. Uh, if it goes through, you're good to go. If not, go back, try default one more time. Um, it, there's no right or wrong of, of how that works, and I'm not sure why uh, uh, they say, but they even say in here, go back and try either one of them, and depending on whether or not it works. Now to test it, uh, to see if you're accessed, if, you've, if you're set up correctly on your Ethernet, is simply just click on this hyperlink right here. And when you click on it, it should launch you. You'll get this screen. If you get this screen first, you're, you're, you're probably golden. But it'll say Windows Security, and it'll want you to put in a username and a password. It will automatically default admin. Don't worry about a password. Just click OK. And we are actually looking inside the Gemini 2 right now through the web interface. Now, I probably should have pointed out to you in the beginning. I mean, obviously, you know you have to have that computer on <laughs> in order to connect everything. But also have your Ethernet cable connected from the computer to the Gemini 2 and have the Gemini 2 powered up. Okay, I, I should have said that in the very beginning. Maybe I did. I, I, I don't remember kind of agitated tonight with this whole RA thing, but that's all right. So there you go. Launches right into it, and uh, you're basically looking at the same thing that you had over there. If you click on the hand control, this is actually the hand control in real time. Uh, this would be the same if you had the Celestron, oh God, I can't remember the name of it, the hand controller interface that you could, uh, Next Remote, I think it was called. Um, you know, you could download that onto your desktop, so you always had, you know, this piece up all the time, um, which is kind of nice. But it's, you know, you can do your directions on it, you know, left, right. Uh, you can park it. Um, you can synchronize your coordinates. You can do your meridian flip from here. Um, so it's basically just having your your hand controller. It's not as smart uh, looking. This is more just for directional use but it is there and available for you. Um, so if you've done everything correctly, again, this is when you launch out, when you click on that uh, IP address down there at the bottom, it should launch you straight out to there. If it does not, then you just need to go back to the advanced TC TCP IP settings and change it either back from default to enables or enables back to default. Again, it's going to be a 50-50 shot. Um, if you are having a problem with a NetBIOS, if you can't get either one of them to work, um, there is... I'm trying to think if they had it in here or not. Um, there is a way to enable your NetBIOS, and I think the way... Uh, I checked it. Maybe I Googled it because um, mine 
was not new and I can't remember exactly how I did that um, but there is a, a, a way to go in to do your net bios and I'm trying to remember if it was this way or not and I honestly cannot remember to save my life anyway maybe I didn't maybe I didn't have a prob problem with it I can't remember but anyway this should work um, so your default should be fine uh, your enable LMSO should be fine uh, Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think yours, uh, you went right to default and it worked. Or I think maybe we went default, it didn't work, we went to enable, went back to default, and it did work. So maybe it's just something quirky about Windows 10. But that's how you get into it, and that's how you connect it. And when everything's said and done, you'll never have to go back and redo these, okay? You'll never have to redo these again. Once it's in your system, it'll be loaded into the system. So when you go to do... Uh, your connection right and be sh oh god you know what I didn't point that out in the beginning either I'm sorry guys I am scatterbrained as hell um, make sure that you load uh, your ASCOM drivers Ethernet connections you need the ASCOM drivers so make sure you load all your drivers first you're gonna need the driver for the Gemini 2 and you're gonna need the Ethernet connection ASCOM driver as well make sure you load those first before you start doing all this now it would make more sense, right? That's right. Um, so that's it. That's basically how you do it. Now you don't always have to connect uh, up to the uh, the Gemini. This way, I mean, the, the the good thing about it when you're connected on the web server, though, is this is where you would do your firmware updates from, that you could do directly off from from the web interface to the Gemini too, and have it take effect. You can also flash your SD cards. Um, you can do some programming in here. You can set your site time. You can set up your modeling, uh, your mount, your flash. So basically everything that you see in the hand controller for the most part is going to be here as well on the site. Um, but you don't have to always launch this every time uh, you're going to go to image or do anything else like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I never use it. Um, I just, and there's a couple reasons why. One is when you do load, uh, the drivers for ASCOM, you will get a, uh, a desktop icon here. And when you are connected to uh, SGB Pro, you'll get another mini one down here, which gives you real-time information every time you move the mount or uh, if you're turning PEC on or off. But you can also just access it straight from your desktop. And this takes you in. You're still through, you're still through Ethernet. But rather than going out through the web, you're doing it um, across the line. And it has all the features in here as well. So you can go in through the setup in order to configure the telescope, which uh, when you do, uh, you're going to want to set your COM port for Ethernet, right? So you're going to want to do this first. Set your Ethernet. Your ball rate should default to 9600. Uh, you can put in your side information here and then uh, set it for when you go to, to go up on connect. Uh, this is also where you choose your boot mode. So you're, you do, I always put prompt if not started because uh, for the most part I always do a cold start. Um, but like last night I actually did, wound up doing a warm restart. Uh, but I always have it ask me uh, before I do it. Uh, your optics and everything you can load into here. Your Gemini centers, you're running GPS, you would do this in here as well. Um, and if Honestly, if I remember correctly, I loaded the ASCOM drivers first uh, in order to do all this and then had to go into co configuration and configure it for Ethernet with a 9600 baud rate and then went out to the Gemini-2 site and then connected for Ethernet. Um, so, yeah, it's one way or the other. I, I swear to God, I can't remember. And I probably should have done this video when I was actually doing this. Uh, but it really didn't occur to me to do. Um, and I, and I kind of wish it, now I did because now I know it's a little bit confusing. But um, if you get if you get sidetracked on it and you're not sure what to do, um, just drop me a line and uh, I'll forward you the uh, Roswell Astronomy email address and uh, we'll exchange phone numbers and, and I can walk you through it. But go ahead and load all your ASCOM first, all the drivers and everything first, and then you should be able to go right into it. Uh, what else? Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, 
once it's up and running, you, again, it's like no touch and play. You're done. You don't have to do anything anymore. Um, every time you connect, it'll all be automatic. You don't have to switch anything. Um, everything will be uh, you know, right there. That's that little thing I was telling you about, the little icon here on the bottom. So when it's actually up and running, all this information will be in input. Your, your date, your time, the mount type, where it's at an RA, where it's at in deck, uh, altitude, azimuth, all this information will be filled in. Um, and for me, every time I'm activating a, a SGP, if it goes to do a plate solve or whatever, that will actually pop up and show me that the mount is moving to the new coordinates of where it's supposed to be going. So it's kind of a nice little feature to have. Uh, did I miss anything? I probably have, and, I, and I'm sorry for the quality of this video. Again, I'm, I'm kind of kind of just in a, uh, I don't want to say disgusted because I'm not really disgusted. I, I, I don't, I'm not hating them out. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's just frustrating um, when, you know, something starts happening and you're not sure what it is. And, you know, if you've, if been, if you've been doing this hobby long enough, then you definitely know. And if you're just starting into it, uh, let me go ahead and prepare you. Um, things go wrong. <laughs> and it's not always like a simple quick fix sometimes it is but the majority of the time it's not and a lot of times you're chasing down numerous things trying to correct something and what gets even more maddening is you have, you may have one problem and you do three different things to fix it and it's fixed but you don't know which of those ones did so it's better to kind of approach these things with like a process uh, of elimination so if you have a problem, correct one thing, try it again. If it doesn't work, correct another thing, try it again. If it doesn't work, try a third thing. Um, a lot of times you'll see this come up with, uh, uh, especially with, uh, I've had it happen in the past with PhD2 where um, I was losing signal, uh, RA signal to uh, my old CGX mount and couldn't figure out what it was. So the first thing I did was uninstall PHD2 and then reinstall it, you know, always blame the software. And that didn't fix it. So you know, the next thing I did was try to uh, uh, adjust the mount and that didn't fix it. And then, you know, took the camera off, blew it out, you know, did everything I did, put the camera back on, refocused it, started everything off again. And, you know, started working for a minute, then it went back to crap again. And so finally it turned out it was the cable. I just had to replace the cable. So sometimes the, the most simplest solution is try that first and then work your way back. But you'll encounter it. If you haven't yet, believe me, you will. You'll have many frustrating evenings um, and you'll have some wasted dark sky time occasionally too. That, that occurred to me a couple years ago on the old AVX mount. But, you know, that's why, you know, I sit at home and I go through all this and try to get everything running perfectly. And sure enough, here's a little situation that popped up. And so there's my, there's my graphs, my uh, guide logs that I submitted to PhD guiding, a uh, PhD to Google group, and that I'm about to send over to Lismondi and see what happens there. So I'll let y'all know, uh, again, that parts on its way from Scott. And uh, when it gets here, I'll shoot a video on installing it. Um, I, I did see a little bit on out on the web uh, where people were having that same little stiction issue, and they got it was resolved with the same thing. I saw a couple of posts on Cloudy Nights about it, and apparently immediately fixed that problem. So I, I, I haven't seen any videos on it, so I'll do a video on that so that y'all can see how it goes together in case you have a G11 and that's what you're trying to figure out. Um, and I guess I'll just I'll let y'all know something eventually about uh, what's going on with this RA issue I got going on. So until then, um, oh, you know what? I got enough data finally last weekend to actually put a picture together. Um, I just haven't had the chance. I haven't had the time to do it yet. So uh, I will try to work on that. I promise you, I will try to get. I actually have a good photo. I looked at all the data. It actually looks really good. I will try to get that processed. I will try to post it for you, and um, and we'll have a win. We'll have a fish, yay! Uh, so with that, you know what? Clear skies, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you have any suggestions on uh, on any future videos, please be sure to drop me a line and let me know. And if you have any questions about connecting up with your Ethernet, 
uh, again, just drop me a line. We'll exchange numbers and we'll walk through it. All right, clear skies.